This is House Planning Help, episode 165. Hello, I'm Ben Adam Smith, and this is the podcast for you if you're interested in self build, because I'm exploring what houses we should be building in the 21st century and trying to break down the major roadblocks that may get in our way. In this session, I'm going to bring you up to speed with my own project, particularly in relation to feeding back on the sketches we've received from our architects. First, though, a little update on our process of trying to sell the house. So initially, the agent advised us to set a guide price that was slightly under what they thought it was worth. The idea being more people are interested. They come in on a single open day and that means less disruption. And then we have the bidding just after that weekend on the Monday. So that didn't work too well. We did this towards the end of January. And I told you about this, how seven people were booked in or six people were booked in and only two showed up. What I didn't reflect on is perhaps the reasons for that. And as we've come towards the end of February now and getting closer to spring, I do wonder about the sense of putting houses on the market in the depths of winter. It's just not much fun viewing houses. Who would want to go out in the cold and you're constantly putting on your shoes and taking them off again? And same with your jackets as well. And even if it's not a rainy day, it's largely bleak in the UK in early January and the gardens are a bit lifeless. So there might be a learning there. Coupled with that, I think the railway station that we're close to was doing engineering work. So that effectively cut off London unless you're prepared for the bus replacement. So I don't think that helped our case either. The range of where people have come from has been astounding to me. I don't know why, perhaps I just thought they would all be people at our doorstep interested in our house, but they have come from all over and a lot of them seem to be exiting out of London just because they can't afford anything in London. So since the first open day, we've had people coming around every Saturday and weirdly, the numbers have gone up <laughs> as we've gone further through. I don't know whether that's the agents perhaps up in the ante and just want to get us off their books. But what that means is lots of clearing up each week. If you have kids, you'll know what that means like. And then you've got to keep the house pristine. The number of pineapples we bought for each week, we're getting through a pineapple so that the fruit bowl looks lovely, flowers for the table. I do think all that stuff counts as you go around a house. That's something that if you watch a lot of the shows where they have a house that's struggling to sell and OK, they may refit it out, but also they want everything looking pristine. So you're selling the lifestyle. And that means that we've removed our bins from in front of our house and put them in the garage and just cleared out all of the junk. And hopefully that is selling it. We've already had one offer. It was lower than we wanted. And we've had another four after this weekend. I think there were six more couples that came round and then another two just at the last minute on Monday. So again, lots of shifting around. But we're getting towards that end bit of the process with a but. Still, everyone, all of those bids under the guide price. And this led us to think, well, should we just get the house valued again? Because we were hoping for at least another 10,000 more. Perhaps if we were prepared to stay in the game and just keep on going or list it with another agent. There are a couple of reasons why I don't want to go down that route. Firstly, the buyer that we have got it just feels right. They really want the house. They're really into it. They're trying hard to put the best offer they can on the table. And I like it from that perspective. The other aspect is if something went wrong in this process, we'd still have a bit of time to try and sell the house again. But probably top of my list is that worry about Brexit. Pulling out of the EU will have some impact on us. I am guessing quite a big impact. But even if it was the best case scenario and it was wonderful, I still think there'd be a few bumps in the road. So that's another reason why I'm keen to get this all sorted. If we can just exchange, get all the legal stuff out the way, that would give me a little bit of peace of mind. Let's get into today's session, though. Sketches, what we're talking about in episode 162. Kay and I briefed John and Chris from Parsons and Whitley. John is our architect. Chris is the boss. And it probably makes sense that you check out that episode first because they go away. They work on the initial sketches and then we wait for that email. We were down at my parents' house when it arrived. Our initial sketch theme for your new house. The plan form is essentially compact in the interest of passive house efficiency. However, I hope we have added sufficient interest with the porch and balcony to avoid the new house appearance. We have linked towards a barn-like appearance as this lends itself to the rectangular form we have followed and the frameless appearance of passive house windows tend to exhibit works quite effectively with the barn aesthetic. 
Plan-wise, I hope we've been able to tick off most of your specific requirements. There are possible questions over the separation of kitchen and boot room and shape size of the snug, but I hope we've created a basic starting point for you to respond to and to begin the conversation. Have a good weekend and I look forward to your thoughts and comments. How do you feel? Nervous. You wonder how much they can actually tune in to what you're thinking. And I like the fact he sent it at five o'clock on a Friday so he could send it. Oh, yeah, then. get home. <laughs> oh, I like it. Okay, so do we have to load anything up or is that it there at the bottom? Ooh. Ooh. Okay, I don't dislike it. Well, that's always a good sign. I think you I know, quite like it. Yeah. Well, I don't think I quite like it too. One of the things to tell without seeing materials and colours. Yeah, I guess so. One of the things I've been wondering about is whether you you look at it now and then you look at it another time later. But I don't know. I quite like the way the garage is. I yeah. think that adds quite a lot of character. <coughs> it onto does it. add a bit of character. Is there anything else attached? There is. Oh, here we go. Here's our floor plan. Let's have a look at the ground floor first. Okay, so we have... Oh, he's put the snug there. Interesting. I thought the snug would be further to the back of the house. Where's the kitchen? The kitchen's there. You're kitchen right. In the he's middle put of the, the house. kitchen in the middle. Interesting. Well, so, we did say the kitchen is the heart of the home. And there's a sliding screen. So you'd enter, you go up the stairs. Entrance porch. Or round to the kitchen. Yeah, so you can go into the bedroom, stroke study. So the study is nice and separated and quiet. So you have to go through the kitchen, out the other side, and into a room. And you've got your own bathroom. Mm-hmm. I don't think you should have a bath downstairs. No, it's probably a little bit unnecessary to have a bath, isn't it? But I, I guess that's that's something simple to So in sort through the out. entrance, turn left to the study or go straight up the stairs or go to the right and into the kitchen, which opens into the dining room and the sitting room. So the dining room will overlook the garden. There's the access to the garden. That will certainly be nice just to get straight out to the garden mm -hmm. at that point there. And that's the, that's the living area with a view. It's interesting to have the living mm -hmm. area next to the snug. Yes, uh, because I said I wanted the snug to be quiet and away from the main well, area. Well, it's, it's obviously got a door to it. Um, I guess it's, it depends how effective that is. I think, I, would, I think it's also a bit big for a snug. I'm not so worried about that, I think. I think I'd rather have the snug here and lose the bath. Snug over there. Mm. It's mm. too close to the noisy area. This is too noisy for a snug. Interesting. Should we have a look upstairs? So up on the top, we have got the stairs going up. Mm -hmm. We go immediately off to bedroom four with an ensuite. That must be the guest bedroom, do you reckon? Yeah, I think so. Because that would be the furthest away and... And quietest. Yeah, quietest. Got an ensuite bathroom. What's ST mean? What's that? Storage, storage. Oh, okay, storage. storage. Yeah. And then obscured glass here. This is the northern elevation. So there are three windows, but they're mm -hmm. all obscured glass. So we have bedroom two and three, which would be James and Bump's room. Mm -hmm. And they access the family bathroom and mm -hmm. shower room, which is what we said. And then... Over here, down the corridor, into our main room. Bedroom one, with a balcony. I think I actually quite like upstairs. Yeah, I quite like well, I think upstairs. That upstairs is fine. There's my dressing room. Can we see what's across here? What's on that? Pouring tea. slightly rotated from approved. Just to get more to south. To improve southerly yeah. aspect and to present more visible frontage when approaching. Yeah, quite okay, like that. Fair enough. Okay, let's go back downstairs again. My one concern about the kitchen being right in the middle of the house is that Smells. I almost like to... No, not, not so much that. I don't think we're going to struggle so much for this, but people who are going to go to the bathroom will have to come through the kitchen. Mm. And the snug is quite a long way to come back round to go to the loo. I can see why they've put the snug here, because you don't need to worry about... I said I don't worry too much about the view because it's a snug. Yeah, I think at the back of the house is probably what I was expecting for the snug, but I, I'm I'm a little bit surprised it's beside the main living yeah, area. Yeah, because that um, that's the quiet area. That's either where we stick the kids when they want to go and watch TV, while we can be with friends but, here. Or you whatever. know, might could that work? I don't know. I think it'd be too noisy. So we discussed it a little more. 
went to bed, of course, reflected on it the next day, looking at those sketches, talking some more, and finally consolidating our thoughts so that we can get in touch with John on Monday. Hey there, is John about? Uh, yeah, is that Ben? Yes. Yeah, recognise your voice, Ben. <laughs> How are you doing? You're okay. I'll put you through, hang on a moment. All right, that's Chris's wife. Recognise your voice. Morning, Ben. Hey, John, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? All right, um, I'm going to hand you over to Kay as well, um, just so we're, we're both here. But um, on the whole, okay. we're Morning. really, we're Morning. really, really pleased. No, no, we hate it. We hate it. We no, hate no. It. Go no, back no, to the drawing like, board. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll tell you the, uh, the the thing that I find funny is that when when you start to think how you feed back, you worry about messing it all up. Is yeah. that familiar? Well, no, it's a case of, really, I mean, it's making a few marks on, on a piece of paper that you can respond to is, is yeah. where we come from, generally. And uh, it, it just, as, as I put in the email, it starts yeah. the conversation. And, yeah, I have um, every faith that you can do the changes that we need. <laughs> <laughs> we're really nervous, I have to say. When we when we open it up, we go, oh, what's it going to look like? What's it going to look like? And we both, yeah. we both went, oh, oh, I like it. We we particularly like the garage, actually. It just adds a little bit of difference to it. So it's not it's not a box. It gives it a bit of a stop end. Like yeah. A almost. Yeah, really like it. Uh, um, which is a traditional feature, too. For, uh, I took this, this barn aesthetic in a way uh, it, it was it was one of the things that you, you mentioned in your, your mm. briefing notes uh, and actually the, the barn aesthetic really does lend itself to larger openings and grouping openings together which wouldn't necessarily uh, look right in a in a more traditional yeah. dwelling that said i think we've we've kind of got somewhere between the two anyway uh, in what we've what we've shown so it kind of works on two different levels at the moment yeah i think it looks like a cross between a sort of a barn and a a, a farmhouse yes yeah, yeah which is exactly that, that that's, <laughs> that, but that, that's what we're looking for yeah. really you know something that oh, can reflect right. the the local vernacular and you've managed to keep all the form simple and stuff and i think also the balcony on the other side and the yeah. porch just give it character don't they yeah. without yes. um yeah. well i wanted to to give it some definition. Um, yeah. The, 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 there's the two aspects, aren't there, with Passive House, that you need to try and keep keep the shape pretty pretty simple, really, mm. to get it to perform, uh, with not too many twiddly bits um, and add-ons. But at the same time, if you, if you do just keep things looking too straightforward, then uh, yeah, there is an aspect of... Looking like uh, a box. Looking too, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think, I think what we've done... Does, does help to, yeah. to give it a bit of definition to the elevations. Um, Obviously, the materials are going to make yeah. a big difference to how it looks. But I, um, I, I, mean, I, I did make a bit of a stab at materials to begin oh. with. But, um, I've knocked them off, actually. <laughs> we had a colour version. Oh, did you? That was, yeah, but I felt that was a little bit of a step too far at the moment oh, okay. before I get the plan. I thought we, I wanted you to concentrate on the plan for okay. really yeah. in the first instance, and then, then we'll perhaps um, move on to the detail of what materials we could use but um, there, are, yeah, there are options obviously there to, to look at and I can show you those well, yeah, cool. options and how it might look. Okay well we're overall we're happy with the, the outside of the house we don't have any specific changes to make. All right. Um, However like Ben said some of the inside changes might uh, might alter it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start with the um, upstairs because that's the easiest. Okay. Uh, so, the only change that we would like up here is to actually lose the shower room. I know we said we'd like a shower room and a bathroom. Yes. But no, looking at... wonder whether it was a, a bit, bit overkill. overkill. Yeah. 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 So, I think we lose the shower and make that family bathroom a little bit bigger. Yes. Yeah, um, that makes sense. That makes absolute sense. Yeah. We were just looking at it and going, okay, so we've got a bathroom and the guest room's got an ensuite suite and... Yeah. Well, um, everybody ends up with... I've been showing everybody ends up with their own bathroom. They do. <laughs> yeah. Which is a little bit overkill. So, yeah, we're, we're just saying lose the shower and maybe enlarge the bathroom instead. Yeah. Okay. Um, and also in the guest room ensuite, suite... I think that should be a shower, not a bath. So Yeah, if... two baths in the whole uh, house is fine. Yeah. Okay. That was really our only comments on the upstairs. Gosh, okay. Good. Yeah, and we like the way you've angled it slightly as well. Yeah, we did wonder whether to push that a little bit more, actually, but the more, just to, 
Well, it's, it's nice that as you approach from the road, you see more of its face rather than um, looking onto the gable end. That was the initial aspect. And then we thought, well, OK, if we, if we move around a little bit more, then we get more of the benefit from the solar aspect. Mm -hmm. um, but then if we move too much, then we lose Ben's view of his, of his property across the <laughs> in the distance. So there's a little bit of a compromise there to... Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, we might be able to move it a little bit more, but I think it kind of works where it is at the moment. Yeah. So, on to downstairs. The things we're not 100% sure on is the location of the kitchen. Is there any reason you put the kitchen there? Um, it was really the, the, the natural progression from having the sitting room with the view mm -hmm. uh, and then dining room uh, more in the, the centre, I guess which um, would have an easier connection through to the snug. So kitchen, I, yeah, I agree, it's, it's, it is slightly uncomfortable to walk through the kitchen. Yes. Yeah. And as the chef as well, one thing that I would really like to avoid that we've got in this house at the moment is people walking through the kitchen. Right, OK. Yeah. yeah, so at the moment, the first room you go into is the kitchen and you have to walk through it to get to the other living areas. Yeah. And the snug for me is too close to the living areas. It's not quiet enough. And right. possibly too much. I, th I don't think the kitchen's big enough, and I think the snug's too big. Okay, I can understand that. The, the snug, uh, the proportions of the snug are slightly uncomfortable too. Um, yes, you did say that, didn't you? Room, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, I'll have a look at those then. Yeah. So it's snug kitchen location. And we really like where you've put the double doors and the bigger know, window. It looks, it looks, it looks, it looks balanced. As yes, as it is. this um, is what Ben was saying about we don't want to ruin it. <laughs> yeah, okay. But I mean, potentially I mean, well, I'm, I'm, you, you I'm could I'm leave. That, yeah. What we can do. This is an audio podcast and I hope you're not completely disoriented now. That's why in today's show notes, of course, you can have a look at the sketches. I've also put together a screen recording of how the internal plans have developed with the feedback that we have provided. So you can go through that. Houseplanninghelp.com slash 165. We're not completely there today. One more thing, I had a couple of questions for Chris. So I emailed him and asked him to record the answers on his phone. First question was, how important is this process of feeding back? The, the process of feeding back to an architect is nearly as important probably as the original brief taking, insofar as all design is, is iterative and uh, our initial sketches when we send them to you are obviously our first interpretation and it's the first time we'll really know whether we've actually understood your brief and started to deliver it. Inevitably, there are going to be some things that we've either misunderstood or misinterpreted or possibly you may have realised once you see it that it's not quite what you, what you wanted. And so that, that first feedback is, is really important to us. We always tell people that we're really thick-skinned and you need to be very honest with us once you've seen our first designs. And obviously that's true. We need to be uh, pretty thick-skinned about it. But constructive feedback. So, yes, I like this. Not really too keen on that. Didn't really anticipate whatever. And I think providing, providing we can keep a reasonable dialogue, then uh, the feedback process will be of benefit to us all. The other thing that I wanted to know about was at what stage should we just go with the designs that we've got? I'd probably say you should never just go with the designs you've got. I think um, uh, the whole design process has to be iterative, as I've mentioned before, and um, there's bound to be things that will crop up as we develop the design, as, as you, you refine your requirements, um, that will necessitate some change. The closer we get towards the end of the design stage, the more aggravating those changes can be, obviously. But at the end of the day, it's it's got to be about your project and, and not ours. So you always need to feed back to us uh, if you want to make some changes. And we will advise you at the time you make those changes what the implications are likely to be. But you should never just settle for what you've got. I think you, you, you need to keep working as we do to make sure that the ultimate Building, after all, we're going to spend a lot of money and a lot of time on this, is actually what you want it to be. Chris also went on to say that the one exception is when you've gone past the design stage and you're on to technical design or even as far as getting it out to tender. Any changes are likely to have a significant impact both on time and cost at that point. Can be done, but he would always advise his clients if there was a big change like this at that point. 
thinking about my own feedback, this is interesting that perhaps for little things, I've decided to myself, oh, don't bother them again. We can do that later down the line. And having made this episode, I think I'm wrong. So I'll give you an example. We've got a bath that's still in one of the bathrooms when we don't really want many baths in the house because obviously they use a lot of water. So that's just sitting there on the plans at the moment. And I haven't fed back to please change that to a shower. Whereas I think you shouldn't be worried about bothering them too much with your architect. It's about getting that information, refining, 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 refining. And hopefully if you get it right at this stage, then it will make life so much easier. You don't want to be later down the line, a few months down the line. Oh, I did want this change here when you could have done that a long time ago. And I, I suppose the more changes that you feed back, it also means that they can be done sometimes in a bundle. So if you send a couple of emails, then that can all be done together and it becomes more efficient. That's just as far as we go for today. We've shown our designs to a few people, obviously family members and a few friends, and the vast majority of people like it. I guess it's difficult because it hasn't got the materials on to tell 100% what the building's going to be like, but they're engaged at this stage. Of the couple of people that haven't been so keen, I'd like to speculate now as to what the reasons might be there. Maybe they just have different tastes, contemporary design. We know that this is a traditional building that we're trying to create. Perhaps also they might think it's too simple. And that's one aspect that I really find satisfying, that I feel I know why we have arrived here. Just for us, I'm not saying you would do the same thing, but why we've got here, we know the constraints of the site, we know the decisions that we have made and the feedback we've given have resulted in these sketches and these plans. And I imagine you should feel that on your project too when you get to this stage. Perhaps the most interesting bit of feedback was from a neighbour who said, oh, I thought you were building an eco home. <laughs> so how you can tell that from these sketches, I don't know that we're not building an eco home. The one thing I would say, maybe it's the scale of the project. And this is a lot bigger than I'd ever anticipated. But there's a lesson in here when you're buying your land, because unless you're prepared to lose money, the size of the house that you build is dictated to by the plot that you buy. We bought a generous sized plot. It had permission for a big building with a floor area of 600 square meters. There's no way we would have wanted that. So we've scaled down as much as we feel we can. And um, we've got to make sure that our land cost plus our build cost plus the profit of 20 to 30 percent, which I imagine we've probably swallowed, is less than or equal to the value of the finished house. We've said that before. We'll say it again, I'm sure. Houseplanninghelp.com slash 165. Let's finish on a hub update and we're getting closer to our next enrollment window. This is an exciting one for me because if you sign up with this enrollment, we'll be working on our designs together, almost like the class of 2017. We're having our first few hub members who are getting towards the end of their project. So they'll be finishing up in 2017 and we'll be taking over, hopefully getting to that construction stage. So let's recap, who's the hub for? Well. It's really for UK based self builders. You're either researching or you're in the process of building an energy efficient home somewhere in there and you feel that we can offer you value. The idea being really one day we want to get to this point where the solution we're providing is just helping you build a better home. That emphasis on ecologically, well, on, on all sorts, just creating something that's better. That is a huge task. I'm aware of that. And I know that we've got a long, long way to go, but we've made a start. And I think some of the things that we offer inside, for example, these in-depth video case studies, which are a bit like an episode of Grand Designs, but cut up into pieces and just focused entirely on decisions. Why have you made that decision? It doesn't mean that you'll make the same decision, but if you can get into the mind of why people have made decisions I think you'll make better decisions also the learning modules trying to lay out step by step the bits that can be and we'll be refining those constantly because ideally we don't want you to be spending lots of time on this it would be minimum amount of time for maximum output we've got the progress call so you're getting together with the community and another area to do that is the private forum so get yourself on the VIP early bird list for the hub, houseplanninghelp.com slash join, and you won't miss out. You'll be first to be notified. That's it. End of the line. Thanks again. Always love having your company and knowing that you've got this far into the podcast. The House Planning Help podcast is produced by Regen Media, content that matters.